Hi fifth graders, welcome to lesson 9.1, line plots. The essential question for this lesson is, how can a line plot help you find an average with data given in fractions? Now go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 9.1, found on page 183, and let's get started. Now let's take a look at this first slide together. It says use the data to complete the line plot. Now a line plot is simply a way to represent and visualize data. We're going to be able to visually see using our line plot how the data is represented. Now our problem says a clerk in a health food store makes bags of trail mix. The amount of trail mix in each bag is listed below. So what you see right here is the amount of trail mix listed or given in each bag. So we're now going to complete our line plot down here using that data. So what I'm going to do is this, because my first number here, the first amount that I come to is my one-fourth pound, I'm going to now go ahead and count how many one-fourth pound bags of trail mix we encounter in our data set. And what I know is this. I know that our first amount is one-fourth of a pound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross off that one-fourth pound and I'm going to, above that one-fourth in my line plot, go ahead and put an X to represent that one-fourth pound. Now, that's one. Now, here's two. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that one off as well. And I'm going to add another X above my one-fourth pound. So we have one, two. So far, one, two Xs. Now, I'm going to go across until I get to my, my next one-fourth pound. So here's three. So I'm going to go ahead and cross off the one-fourth pound here, and I'm going to put another x above my one-fourth down there. Now let's continue our count. Here's another one-fourth pound, so that makes four. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that one off as well, and I'm going to place another x in my line plot. So what I know is this. In the data set, there's one, two, three, four one-fourth pounds, and what I know is now in my line plot, I have one, two, three, four X's to represent those four one-fourth pound bags. Now I'm going to come across to my next number which is our one-half. And I'm going to begin to make a count again of how many now one-half pound bags we have of trail mix. So I'm going to go ahead and begin and I see right here we have one of our half pound bags. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cross that off and I'm going to put an X above our one one-half. Now I'm going to continue counting Here's another one, so that makes two. So we're going to go ahead and cross that one off and place another X here. Now we'll continue our count. Here's three, so we'll go ahead and cross that one out and place an X above the one half. And then here's four, so we'll cross that one off and place another X above our one half as well. So for the one half pound bags, there was one, two, three, four. So in our line plot, we now have one, two, three, four X's. Now my last step is to count how many three-fourth pound bags we have. So I'm going to go back to my data set and make my count. Here's one, so I'm going to go ahead and cross out that three-fourth pound, and I'm going to place an X above the three-fourths. We'll continue counting. Here's two, so we'll cross out that three-fourth pound and put an X above our three-fourths. Here's three, so we'll go ahead and cross that one out as well, place another X above the three-fourths. And then here is four. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that three-fourths pound off and place another X above our three-fourths in the line plot. Now what I know is there's one, two, three, four, three-fourths pound in our data set. And there's now one, two, three, four X's in our line plot. What I also notice is, I'm looking at our data set, I see that all of our numbers have been crossed off or crossed out, and that means I've accounted for every number in the data set. It's a good strategy to use as you complete your line plot. So we now have our line plot completed for this data set. Now let's take a look at question number one together. As you can see, question number one has already been completed for us, but it's a good model or example to show us how to use our line plot in order to complete a given question. For number one, it says, what is the combined weight of the one-fourth pound bags? So I know that I'm focusing on the one-fourth pound bags. Now remember, in our line plot, we knew that there were one, two, three, four of the one-fourth pound bags. So what I can do is this. I can take my one-fourth 
and over here I'm going to write down my 1 fourth, and I'm going to multiply that by 4 because once again there were 1, 2, 3, 4 x's. Now when I do that what I know I can do is this in multiplication I can take that whole number 4 and I can put it over a 1 to put it in fraction form and now I'm going to look to see can I simplify diagonally. Well I know that I have a 4 and a 4 and a 1 and a 1 and I know with those two fours I can simplify so I'm going to cross those fours out and I'm going to make both of those fours into ones. Now when I multiply across here's what I have. One times one is going to give me one and I know once again that one times one is going to give me one and if I have the whole number one as my numerator and also the whole number one is my denominator I know that my answer is going to turn out to be one whole. So that's how we're coming up with an answer of one pound. So the combined weight of the one-fourth pound bags is going to be one pound because one-fourth times four takes me to one. Now let's take a look at question number two. Question two says what is the combined weight of the one-half pound bags? So what I'm going to do this time is in my line plot I'm not going to focus on the one-half pound bags. And what I know is this, based on the number of x's, there's one, two, three, four, one half pound bags. So I can util utilize the strategy that we did on the last question, and what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take my one half, so I'm going to go ahead and write down one half, and I'm going to multiply that, once again, by the number four, because there's one, two, three, four, one half pound bags. So I'm going to multiply one half times four, and remember, I can place a 1 underneath that 4 to put it in fraction form. Now I'm going to look diagonally to see if I can simplify. I have a 1 and a 1 and a 2 and a 4. And what I know is I can simplify that 2 and that 4. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out the 2 and the 4. That 2 is going to become a 1 because 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. And that 4 is going to become a 2 because 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. Now we're going to go ahead and multiply straight across, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And what I know is this. I know that 1 times 2 is going to give me 2, so our numerator is going to be a 2, and I know that 1 times 1 is going to give me 1, so our denominator is going to be a 1. And if I have the whole number 2 over 1, I know my answer is going to turn out to be 2, so what that tells me is the combined weight of the one half pound bags is going to turn out to be two pounds. So we'll go ahead and write down two pounds and we now have found our answer using our line plot. Now let's take a look at question number three. Question three says what is the combined weight of the three fourth pound bags? So I know that in my line plot this time I'm going to focus on the three fourth pound bags and I know based on the number of x's I have one, two, three, four of those three fourth pound bags. So I'm going to use the strategy that we did for the last couple of questions and what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take my three fourths and since there are once again one, two, three, four x's, I'm going to multiply that three fourths by four. Now once again I'm going to put that four over one to put it in fraction form. Now I'm going to look diagonally, diagonally to see can I simplify. And what I know is I have a 3 and a 1 and also a 4 and a 4. And I know that I can simplify those two 4's. So I'm going to go ahead and cross those 4's out and make both of those 4's into 1's. Now we're ready to go ahead and multiply across. So I have 3 times 1 which is going to give me 3. So 3 becomes the numerator. And now I have 1 times 1 which is going to give me 1. So 1 is my denominator. And if I have 3 over 1, I know that my answer turns out to be the whole number 3. So what that tells me is when it asks for the combined weight of the 3 fourth pound bags, I know that my answer turns out to be 3 pounds. So we'll go ahead and write that down and we now have our answer using our line plot. Now for question number 4 it says what is the total weight of the trail mix used in all the bags. Now remember we had our line plot completed with our X's 
And in the last few slides, we found the total weight of each one of those. So for one fourth pound, since there were one, two, three, four X's, our total weight was one pound. For the one half bags, there were one, two, three, four of those bags. And so we multiplied four times one half and came up with two pounds. And for the last weight, there was three fourths, and there were one, two, three, four of those three fourth pound bags. So when you multiply three fourths times four, it takes you to three pounds. Now this question once again says, what is the total weight? So if I'm going to find the total weight, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add those amounts together. So I'm going to be adding my one pound plus my two pounds plus my three pounds. And when I add those amounts together, 1 plus 2 is going to give me 3, and 3 plus 3 is going to give me 6. So that tells me that there's going to be 6 pounds of the trail mix used in all of the bags. And we now have our total weight. Now let's take a look at question number 5. It says, what is the average amount of trail mix in each bag? Now the key word here is the word average. And in order to find the average, it simply means the middle or the mean of all of your data set. So there's a couple of steps we're going to take in order to find the average amount of trail mix in each bag. Step number one, you have to find the sum of the weights of the bags of trail mix. And what we know is from our last slide is this. That means we have to add the one plus the two plus the three. And when I add the one pound plus the two pounds plus the three pounds, that gives me a total of six pounds. So we now have the weight of those pounds of trail mix. Now step number two is this. We now have to divide. And we're going to divide the sum, which is six, by the number of bags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my line plot and I'm going to make a count of all of my x's. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 6 and I'm going to be dividing that by the 12 bags. So we have our 6 pounds divided by the 12 bags. Now what I know that means is this. I can also write that in fraction form. So we have our 6 and remember that line can represent a fraction or also division. So 6 divided by 12. Now I know that I can't leave 6 twelfths as my final answer because I know that I can divide both a 6 and a 12 by 6. So when I do that, I know that 6 divided by 6 is going to give me 1, so our numerator becomes a 1. And I know that 12 divided by 6 is going to give me a 2. So now what I know is the average amount of trail mix in each bag is 1 half pound. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my 1 half pound and we now have the answer to our question. We know the average or the middle or mean of our data set. Now as your homework for tonight you need to complete question number one and question number two as well as numbers three through six found in your Go Math workbook on page 184. Don't forget somewhere on your homework page I want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four, an expert. Don't forget, your homework for tonight is to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your GoMath workbook on page 184. We hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.